The most popular tech wiki ever was this one from 2014, where we explained Intel's core i3, i5, and i7 CPUs. But they say a lot can change in eight years, and in this case, they were right. So today, we're gonna give you a roundup of Intel's current 13th gen desktop processor lineup, updated for 2023. While the upcoming laptop versions of these CPUs will likely have specs a little different than what's presented in this episode, their overall use cases will be similar. We're gonna start at the very top of Intel's current product stack and talk about the Core i9, which displaced the Core i7 as the highest end consumer processor lineup back in 2017. Simply put, current Core i9 models give you the most cores and the most cache, period. Intel's current 13th gen of CPUs, codenamed Raptor Lake, gives you 36 megabytes of cache and a total of 24 cores on an i9, eight multi-threaded high-performance cores that kick in when you're doing something CPU intensive, and 16 more power efficient cores for less taxing workloads. i9s also come with Turbo Boost Max 3.0, which sounds like a Power Ranger spinoff, but is actually a feature that identifies your specific CPU's fastest cores for an extra bump in speed. Core i9s also feature the highest boost frequencies, so they're best for gaming, although for the money, it's probably best to only pull that trigger if you really need the power for heavy duty creative work like 3D rendering or video editing. Moving down the ladder, you have the Core i7, which is kind of like a mini Core i9. You get the same eight high performance cores, but only eight efficiency cores for a still generous total of 16. Although the cache size is slightly reduced to 30 megabytes, you still get Turbo Boost Max 3.0. The Core i7 can be a good buy if you're a streamer and can use the extra cores, or if you're a content creator that doesn't need quite as much power as the Core i9 offers. Next up is the Core i5, which is actually gonna be the sweet spot for most of you. We'll tell you why right after we thank FreshBooks for sponsoring this video. When building a business, it's easy to feel like there aren't enough hours in the day. And if you're doing all the invoicing and accounting on your own, you're probably spending too much time on paperwork. FreshBooks is an all-in-one accounting software that can save you several hours a week. That's more time to spend nailing a client pitch, serving your customers, or just enjoying the company of those you love. And right now, there's a special offer just for our listeners. Head over to freshbooks.com slash techwiki to get 90% off your FreshBooks subscription for four months. The Core i5 has only six high performance cores and either four or eight efficiency cores depending on the model you get, but that's still more than enough to qualify for the good bang for your buck award if you're gonna use your PC primarily for gaming. You get less cash, either 24 or 20 megabytes, and there's no Turbo Boost Max 3.0, but that trade-off comes with a very significant reduction in price. And just because it's a mid-range doesn't mean it's a slouch in creative apps either. Sitting below the i5 is the Core i3, which has a more straightforward composition. You get four high performance cores, 12 megabytes of cache, and that's it. These specs are sufficient for light to moderate gaming, but might struggle a bit in the AAA titles that are now asking for six or more cores. But you do get a dramatic reduction in price, so it's something you could look at if you don't need tons of power, but wanna do some reasonable multitasking without your computer breaking a sweat. And at the very bottom of the product stack, well, it's a little unclear as to how Intel will brand this segment going forward. The desktop side is still, as of now, using the Pentium branding for the higher end budget CPUs and Celeron for the lowest end entry models. But on the laptop side, Intel has gotten rid of Pentium and Celeron and replaced them with a single brand called Intel Processor, which is so generic, it's confusing. It isn't clear right now whether future desktop chips will follow suit, but given that Intel's website already seems to be de-emphasizing the Pentium and Celeron brands, it wouldn't at all surprise us. Once you get down to this level, don't expect to do anything aside from light work and casual gaming. If you want a bit more power for multitasking, go with a Pentium. Otherwise, you can save a few bucks by opting for a Celeron, which will work just fine as long as you don't push it beyond a few basic tasks at the same time. Hopefully this has helped you make sense of Intel's letter and number gumbo. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go have a bowl of alphabet soup. Mmm, alphabet. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And check out our other videos. And maybe maybe leave a video suggestion in the comments. And subscribe and follow. Follow, follow. Is there following on YouTube? Oh, you could ring the bell. That's what you could do. That's like following.